My fellow generals, the Birsil Espionage Network has done some amazing work and we have now gained full access to the Paradox assets. And today we will be discussing another of the new countries to receive a focus tree and by blood alone, Ethiopia. So without further ado, part one of the Ethiopian focus tree and country rework. First of all, they're gonna give these boys a dress. So this is all work in progress, but this is what the Ethiopian Irregular Infantry will look like, sort of. So these are militia units, much like Italy gets their own militia units. The, these will dress in the traditional fashion instead of the uniforms we all know and love from our European countries. So I like, I like where this is going. Doesn't impact the game too much, but it's an eye for detail. And how could we not do Haile Selassie justice, one of the two remaining emperors in the world, Haile Selassie by the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah, his imperial majesty, Haile Selassie the first, king of kings, lord of lords, elect of God. So he starts off with a very hefty title and some bonuses as a leader. So this is this is helpful. This is good. I like this. It's, it's a nice bit of uh, history. What I don't really like is the national spirit. So as with any new country that gets to uh, go through the rework, they get a bunch of national spirits and not all of those are positive. That traditional warfare thing is going to make it very difficult, I think, to play as Ethiopia, mostly because you will not really be able to entrench your units to fight off the Italians. You're going to need to think outside the box, but we'll see how this plays out, I suppose. What I do like, again, work in progress, what I do like is what they've done with the place. Uh, in the current version of the game, Ethiopia is just one zone and that's it. They have gone in and changed all of the provinces. So the, the country is now properly split up along historical lines with a, a an allowance here and there just for gameplay and simplicity. So this is a good middle ground. I like this. Several provinces. This gives you a lot more options if you survive as Ethiopia to build up your country. Plus um, some changes that were much needed. They've actually turned one of the deserts into desert terrain type. So yeah, only took you what, six years? Thanks, Paradox. Now, Italy and Ethiopia start at war at start of the game. Now, to keep things simple, both countries start with their troops on their own land. It, it is mostly correct for 1936 after the Christmas offensive of 1935. For simplicity's sake, this is how everything starts. And one of the guiding principles of this war for the Ethiopian side, as well as the Italians, is the League of Nations. Now, historically, the League of Nations didn't really do much. Ethiopia was abandoned by pretty much everyone because the Everybody was sucking up to Italy, hoping they would be a counterweight to Germany. Spoiler alert, they weren't. Um, but in this case, it is possible as the war escalates by Ethiopia simply clinging on to dear life, that there is progress with the League of Nations, uh, giving debuffs to Italy, buffs to Ethiopia, and unlocking certain focuses for Ethiopia. So by simply the virtue of surviving, Ethiopia can definitely hurt the Italians and further their own cause. And the higher this ticks, this war escalation here, the more focuses you can unlock for Ethiopia. Now we will get back into this later on. First, we're going to look at the rest of the Ethiopian focus tree. And what Ethiopia is definitely lacking is industry. And there is an entire branch dedicated to the Ethiopian industry, which is much, much needed. And through this focus tree, we will start to modernize the industry of our nation. And oh boy, it's about time. A lot of choices will have to be made uh, between certain aspects of the industry. But overall, it does look like a nice path towards being a real full-fledged country. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not sure a lot of people are going to see the full effect of this focus tree because I think it's going to be quite difficult to fight that war with Italy. And none of this is going to work if you're occupied. And because Ethiopia doesn't have a hard enough time as it is, all Ethiopian states will start with a negative modifier. The one you see on screen now, state development minus 10% for construction and max factories is for the capital. This is the weakest modifier. So this is the best case scenario for Ethiopia. The capital itself already has a penalty of 10% and all other states have a penalty of 30 
percent you will have to go through the focus tree to reduce and eventually remove this modifier but this feels like kicking ethiopia when it's down i know it's historically accurate and it simulates just how and forgive the term of phrase but how backwards ethiopia was compared to the european nations at the time in terms of industry and uh, national development but come on man it's gonna be hard enough as it is but fortunately there are also some good things happening here ethiopia will get a couple of designers most of these will be foreign companies setting up an ethiopian branch but there will be some homegrown stuff in here as well and i like i like it i like the lion on the tracks here very cool very cool and a major aspect of an Ethiopia play, the army. The army has been revamped and it will be larger than it starts out in vanilla and split along two parts. The regular or Mehan Sefari and the irregular forces. Essentially, you will have regular infantry like everybody else has, but you will also have a segment of your army consist of militia units that are bought and paid for by local lords. They have some bonuses in terrain, but are generally weaker than regular infantry and there's a limit to the amount of these units you can get. As you work through the focus tree, there will be choices to make as well for the military, either focusing on increasing the amount of militia men you can support because they're cheap, they do well in the desert, and they're good with supply, even if they're not as good in a fight as regular infantry. Or you want to move away from that type of warfare into actual regular European-style infantry and army units. But everything has its price, and we will need to maneuver some politics, but more on that later. We can see here an example of one of those focuses that could improve the militia. You get more units, you can improve their stats a little, make the template that exists a little more powerful, but all the way down there, the balance of power moves towards one of the sides in our country. So yeah, little tip of the veil lifted there. Ethiopia will also feature a balance of power mechanic. Seems like there'll be a running theme here. And here we can take a look at the military branch of the focus tree. It looks extensive. Uh, I don't have more information than this. Uh, a spy will be shot for his incompetence. Don't worry, but it's looking spicy. It's big enough to matter. I just don't know how much of this we'll be able to walk through while Italy is kicking our door down. If all of these are 70 day focuses, we're screwed. I just hope they put a lot of 35 days in so we can actually get some progress done and stand the chance against Italy. And here we can see balance of power. Ethiopia will start with a balance of power similar to the Swiss and Italian ones and it will focus on the Mequanint on one side. These are the centrally appointed officials, basically the government and the Mesafint on the other side, the hereditary nobility, um, your local lords and chieftains. So it will be either a balancing act between the local governments and the central government with bonuses and penalties depending on which side of the scale you're on. If you go fully to one side, you might get some mighty good bonuses, but there are also the potential for some catastrophic events. I'm thinking civil war here, but they're reserving more details for the next dev diary. I think they'll do that along with the army branch. I hope our spies are better that time. And this is a special little sub branch, uh, the second Italo-Ethiopian war branch. This is a bunch of mostly 35 day focuses helping you to fight the Italians. And they're all blocked once the war is over one way or another. So this little sub branch is only active while that war is going on. Now, realistically, that war is either going to last for a very long time or going to be over very soon. But it's nice that they give you this little thing just to get a little edge. I just hope these focuses are actually worth something and not just build forts in a province you're going to lose anyway because your troops cannot entrench. Moving on, decisions, decisions, decisions. As Ethiopia the first thing you need to choose is what happens to your leader. Historically, Haile Selassie left Ethiopia to try and convince other countries and the League of Nations to send him aid and to sanction Italy. Historically, it did not play out very well. And should you follow the historical path, this is where we end up with. This is a small subtree focused primarily on supporting your country through gifts of equipment, embargoes on Italy. Essentially, it's it's no direct involvement by outside powers, but they will give you a little bit of help while pointing the finger at Italy. And the main benefit of this branch will be that you will be allowed to set up some sort of government in exile with a host country, but more on that later. Now, one very 
spicy focus here is the International Brigades. Volunteers from other countries to fight on your behalf. About four to eight random miners will send you one division each. Um, and those League of Nations members will uh, contribute a very colorful assortment of troops to your cause. And four to eight countries donating some troops might not seem like much, but eight extra divisions can tip the war, trust me. Speaking of going into exile, should you choose that path and you take the focus boarding the train and Haile Selassie fucks off to somewhere else, you will be able to embed a government in exile in one of your host countries. You will have to work your way through a government in exile focus tree depending on what nation you picked as a host and we'll show a couple of examples later on. Most of those focuses will work towards various decisions, boosting resistance in Ethiopia itself, lowering compliance and just giving Italy a bad day. And the reason we're doing that is the only way for Italy to get rid of you once you're in exile is to get compliance high enough in Ethiopia itself. So you're pretty much playing a game of cat and mouse, boosting their resistance, lowering their compliance, while Italy is doing the opposite to try and get Ethiopia fully under control. Should they be able to get all resistance wiped out and compliance high enough, they will be able to create their own little puppet in the region via decision Africa Oriental Italiana. And if that happens, you are gone and it is game over. And these are a few examples. Should you go to America, you can... Uh, do these things. Should you go and have a chat with the Führer? You have other options. Steel lions, um, thinking tanks, maybe some tanks for Ethiopia, who knows? And the lion and the sun, can you guess? Can you guess where we're going here? An Ethiopian navy in exile? Huh? Can, can you tell? I, I am excited for this. I, I generally try not to lose wars, but it might actually be a legitimately fun playthrough, losing that initial war and then coming back swinging. Now this, this focus is what I am most excited about, staying to fight. The Emperor stands with his people, the Lion stands firm. This tree is focused on Haile Selassie staying in Ethiopia, digging in his heels and fighting to the last breath. There will be no government in exile should you fail, but should you succeed, this tree unlocks some of the god tier national leader traits for Haile Selassie, turning him into an absolute Chad, like we've seen with Mussolini and Stalin before. This is the path to an absolute meme lord status for Haile Selassie. Of course, it's going to be the most difficult path of all, uh, fighting it out one-on-one -on -one with Italy, but um, hey, who doesn't like a challenge, right? And one more bonus of this part of the tree is fait accompli at the bottom there. Should you push Italy, not just back to their own territory, but also take Italian Somaliland and uh, what's that other place? Italian Eritrea. Through that focus tree, you will get a white piece and control over those territories, much like the decision currently works in the game, this will allow you to take everything. Well, if Haile Selassie goes and gets foreign support, he will also be able to force a white peace, but he will not be able to convince the world leaders to have Italy transfer control of those territories. So this is big rewards, big risk. This is the full tree, rally around the emperor, and then we decide to leave or to stay. I very much am looking forward to playing as Ethiopia. But of course, the war will end at some point, and there's more focus tree to be had down here. As you can see, the King of Kings focus here. This is where we start buffing our national leader and it can only be accessed if you have gone with the lion stands firm, the emperor stays. This left branch here, this allows us to completely jack up Haile Selassie. Plus it leads down there to the one true heir of Solomon, giving Ethiopia historical claims in the region on the old empire of Aksum, all the way up to the lands of King Solomon, and that would be, if I'm not mistaken, Judea? Now, I'm not sure how all of it's going to work. Is it going to be claims? Is it going to be events to ask for transfer of territory? Because I'm not looking forward to fighting the Axes and the Allies. There's also the option of African unity in a, a large African faction, or Pan-Africanism, which I would assume is cores on Africa, maybe? 
we'll have to see. In short, the only one to have access to all options at the bottom for the future of Ethiopia and Africa is a Haile Selassie who stayed and fought, while those who went into exile and maybe had an easier time of it have only access to African unity and pan-Africanism. Now, these two can be excellent options in their own right. This is an example of the African unity. We create the faction African Union. We have decisions to increase resistance and boost autonomy gain in African countries and allow us to intervene in African wars of independence. Essentially, we start stirring the pot in Africa, trying to get local countries to throw off their colonial overlords with our help and have them join our faction. I don't know how easy or difficult this is going to be. Usually there's not a whole lot going on in Africa. If Europe is distracted in, well, Europe, this might offer up an opportunity to snatch away Africa from them. And another department Ethiopia has been sorely lacking in is advisors. And oh boy, baby, we're getting some advisors here. All of these historically accurate. Most of these probably locked behind focuses, but I like that we're getting options. We're finally no longer bound to just a few generic advisors, just a different name doing the same thing. Ooh, a collaborationist archbishop. Interesting. Also, a military high command is getting revamped and it looks like we're getting a Russian to help us. That looks like an American or a British man, John Robinson. These two are Swedes, if I'm not mistaken, Viking Tam and Karl Gustav. Yeah, these are Nordics, at least. It looks like the Ethiopian cabinet is going to be a mix of different nationalities. And with that, we have come to the end of this part one. I am very much looking forward to the part two, where we can get really into how Ethiopia is going to do. I am very much looking forward to playing Ethiopia a lot more, honestly, than I am looking forward to playing Switzerland or Italy. This is going to be the Dark Souls of Hearts of Iron, Emperor Haile Selassie standing firm against the Italians. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoy this next one as well. See ya.